What's up, hobby friends, and welcome to my video tutorial on how to paint Marvel Crisis Protocol's Agent Venom. I've got the colors I've used on the screen now, so if you want to give the video a pause and note those down, we can dive right on into the tutorial. For this miniature, we're going to be painting Agent Venom in a blue-black suit. If you want to paint it in something a little different, you can also check out my black-green recipe for Black Bolt. I'll have a link in the description below. So when we're building this model, it goes together pretty nicely. I'm not a huge fan of the pose and the anatomy. I think it's a little forced. Um, I think the way that his legs twist doesn't really make a lot of sense. You're obviously gonna you're gonna pull something in your crotch or in your hip or, or um, right in your thighs right there. It doesn't make much sense to me. So that's a probably be my only issue with the model. But I think otherwise everything looks good. It goes together pretty nicely. All of the gaps are hidden by seams in the suit and the armor. So in terms of gap filling, there really isn't a whole lot to do. Where the tentacles do make contact with the base, I applied a little bit of gloss varnish just to help hide the seam. So when we prime it, we can just give it a double check, do some light sanding or another layer of gloss varnish if necessary to cover it up. As well, to help blend the um, rock or base element into the actual base itself, I used some texture paste. This is AK Dark Earth Diorama Paste, but really anything will do. You're more just looking to hide the seam where the wall meets the base and make it feel like it's rubble that's sort of been strewn or thrown off and, and it's just sitting there now. So what I'll do is I'll give the model a prime with Vallejo Surface Primer Black. I'm gonna paint the majority of the base off camera. For the base stone itself, I'll be using a khaki stone, and then I think for the brick wall, probably terracotta and then khaki for the topper. If you want to actually check out the recipes and techniques, I'll have links in the video description below where I've painted those colors on some of my other marble bases. So I don't feel the need to repeat it here. Although we will come back and I'll just show you the process for painting the non model model fence right here. In terms of the actual recipe itself, this will be another video in a series of ways that you can paint black. I know that painting black is a particularly challenging color, especially for tabletop models. If you checked out my video um, a few weeks past, and I'll have the link below as well. I painted a particular recipe that was a black, blue, green on Black Bolt as well from Atomic Mass Games. For this one, to match the Venom that I've already painted for my own collection, I'll be going more for a, a cooler blue black. So just another way to approach the black and just give it a little bit more color and a little bit more pop rather than just do either some sort of neutral gray black or something that might be flatter and not have quite the same punch or pop. I also feel like in more old school traditional comics from like the 60s, 70s, 80s, when printing technology was still fairly limited, they used to print black with blues. And I feel like painting, especially these comic models, in that sort of blue black helps to tie it in, at least for me, and it gives it a little bit more of that nostalgic feel. So I prefer doing that rather than just always use grays. So yeah, let's get this model primed and then we'll dive right on in. I'm gonna start with a bit of airbrush prep work. My first stage is using AK's Dark Sea Blue to apply a base coat over the entire model. You can see that I've used painter's tape to mask off the tape to protect what I've already painted on the base itself. You want to make sure you get a nice even base coat, especially on the tentacles. From there, I'm going to start mixing in some AK's Gray Blue, and I'm going to do a Zenithal highlight. I'm going to focus a lot on the upper part of the body. We're looking at the top of the head, chest, arms, and legs, as well as the upper curves of the tentacles. You can see that I'm spraying directly from above to basically catch just the raised areas and leave that dark sea blue in the shadows. From there, I'm going to go back in with some dark sea blue and base coat the tentacles that were covered up with the painter's tape. You want to be as neat as possible with this stage and you can mix in a bit of that um, lighter gray blue to fade it back into the airbrushing. From there, we're going to start mixing in progressive amounts of dark sea blue and gray blue to form the highlights. So because I'm going to be using the airbrush to do some glazing and smooth up my blends afterwards, 
my highlighting at this stage is fairly rough and fairly loose. What I'm looking to do is really sketch in the basic forms and the volumes. I'm more concentrating on the placement of lights and shadows and less so on keeping everything smooth. The goal here is to keep it nice and loose, lock in the highlights over the entire model before going back in with the dark sea blue and maybe a bit of black afterwards in very thin glazes to then smooth out those transitions, create smoother blends, and give a more polished finish. I found I spent pretty much the majority of the time, and it makes sense because Agent Venom is entirely a black symbiote suit. You really want to make sure that you spend the time to make this black pop. Once you hit pure gray blue, you'll keep introducing more highlights by mixing into AK's pale blue. As I'm working my way up, I'm really focusing these highlights on the upper part of the body. We're looking at the top of the chest, shoulders, collar, head. From there, I'm going to mix in a 50-50 mix of gray blue and dark sea blue. And you can see what I'm doing with the airbrush. I'm keeping it very soft. The mixture in my airbrush is almost like a watercolor mix. And I'm just sort of glazing into those midtones to start to smooth up those transitions. I'm using short bursts to lay down some color and then the airbrush to air dry. My next step is to use pure dark sea blue and I'm gonna keep doing the exact same thing. A neat trick to make this work really, really well is use a lot of airbrush flow improver. I think the mix in the airbrush is almost 50-50 um, flow improver water. And then from there, I would say it's like one or two drops paint that may be um, six or seven drops of that water flow improver mix. The airbrush, I also have it set to a pretty low PSI, 10 or 15. And we're basically doing just short bursts, lay down a bit of that color, and then use the airbrush again to air dry before laying down your next mix. Once I'm done with the airbrush glazing, I'll go back in by hand with some of that gray blue and that pale blue, and I'll refine my highlights, polish up some of the overspray areas, because obviously the airbrush isn't perfect. And it's here that I'm going to start to dilute my color a little bit more and to feather my highlights down. You can see I'm just laying down very soft, progressive layers of color to rebuild up those highlights and then add a bit more polish on some of the areas where I do want it to be fairly bright. From there, I'm gonna take dark sea blue and black, and I'm gonna punch the shadows a little bit more, again, using that same airbrush glazing technique. You can do all of these glazes by hand. You probably get a little bit more control, a little more accuracy with the brush, but it does require a little bit more control and a stronger grasp of being able to feather and glaze your colors out, where I find with the airbrush, it's a lot faster um, and a lot more consistent, if at the cost of that accuracy. I'm gonna go back in with Games Workshop's Drew Violet, here in the airbrush with a few drops of flow improver, and I'm gonna target the really deep shadows of Agent Venom's suit. I'm looking to add a bit more nuance and a little bit of punch into those shadows. And then I'll revisit the shadows again with some um, Vallejo's Scarlet Red. I'm not gonna really apply too much of this red. I'm looking at the deepest folds and crevices, mainly in the underside or deep shadows. So we're looking at the underside of the crotch, behind the knees, and in particular on the undersides of the tentacles. Using the scarlet red helps to add a lot more color information into the shadows without necessarily tweaking the values too much. You can see just a little bit of red adds so much more depth to that shadow and it gives the that blue black a lot more visual interest. And you don't have to use red, you can play around with different colors. I just find that the red blue combo works very, very well. From there, we're going to start painting all the different black elements, including the, um, the belts, the uh, bindings, any pouches, and the guns. Effectively, anything that's going to be gray or silver. Once I've done the black base coat, I'm going to go in with rubber black and basically base coat everything again, leaving black in the deepest crevices. This step is, it's a very subtle step. At first glance, you don't even notice it, but it adds a bit more warmth to that color. From there, I'll go in with ash gray. For any of the metallic elements, I'm gonna apply a nice even base coat. And then on any of the, um, the belts or the bindings, I'll apply a thinner edge highlight. I'm 
Now I'm making the compromise because this is a uh, tabletop piece. I'm not hand blending all of the straps, but you certainly could if you wanted to be a little more on the display side. What I'm looking here for is high contrast. I wanna mix up the different types of black elements and having that crisp gray edge helps to pop those elements out without necessarily keeping or making the black too bright. I'll repeat this process with dark sea gray. For the metallic elements, I'll focus more highlights on the raised areas and then on the straps and pouches, I'll apply a really sharp edge highlight. Again, I'm looking for tabletop pop. I don't want these black elements to be gray and you do run the risk sometimes where if you do blend it um, and you lose a lot of those mid and dark tone black or rubber black values, it ends up looking more gray and less black. So what I'm looking here is, it's almost like a, a games workshop style where you pop edges and corners with bright spots of color and you leave the majority of the flat areas in your deeper um, blacks or black grays. Once I've done all the highlighting, I'm gonna go back in just like with the blue suit, some glazes of the black paint to smooth out those transitions and knock back some of those uh, mid dark areas into pure black. I'm working with pretty much what is a watercolor consistency and it just adds a little bit more of a, a shade and a softness to the weapons especially. To paint the white, I'm gonna start with a base coat of dark sea gray. This color base goes pretty well, so not too much effort has to be made. Um, effectively, this is like a mid-tone gray. From there, I'll start highlighting with medium sea gray. And because we're, we're gonna be working almost up to pure white, I wanna start laying down big blocks of color where, especially on the spider, it does match some of the highlighting and shadowing on the suit. You wanna make sure that you're applying your lights and shadows in a consistent manner. My next color is AK Warm Gray, continuing to highlight up. The, the white that I'm going for is more of a warm tone white, and so the colors that I'm progressing through are in those warm tones. They're not neutral grays, they're more hints of ivories or khakis or eggshells in there. And I don't want to build up to pure white right away or over a majority of the area. I want to have depth in my white. So you can see that I'm using a lot of mid and dark tones to create that depth where my final highlights are very minimal when it comes to how much white I use. It's a lot of it is sitting in that just a step or two below. So here we're going to be using pale sands for the majority. And then for the next step, I believe I do use just a touch of white on the upmost raised surfaces. We're looking at like tops of the, the pincers as well as any top edges and the legs that go over the chest. But the majority of the white is in that mid and dark tone gray. To paint the fence, I'm gonna be using a sort of a black, brown, green, non-metal metal style. So on top of a black base coat, I'm gonna apply again that base coat of rubber black just to warm the color up a bit and give it a bit more of a, a saturated tone. From rubber black, I'm gonna start mixing in progressive amounts of green sky, much like with the the black belt and bindings on the rest of Asian Venom. I'm not looking to create blends. I want texture. I want this gate to have a bit of a worn, um, scratchy surface to it. So you can see that I'm not really blending the color together. I am applying my highlights in a scratchy manner. And as I brighten it up, I'm adding more and more of that green sky. I'm focusing more of those highlights on the edges, focusing on corners, on chips, on edges. The goal is to create the, the effect of a scarred or a worn metal surface. And then once you've got that color laid down, much like with the suit, go back in with glazes of your mid and shadow tones. Here, I'm just using pure black um, in a watercolor consistency, doing soft glazes to help transition those mid and dark tones, make it feel a little bit smoother while maintaining that texture. It's a really nice, quick way to paint, especially non-metal model, without spending too much time blending everything together. And finally, I'm gonna finish off the model with some weathering powders. I'm using a 50-50 mix of dark yellow ochre and burnt umber from Vallejo. It's something I use on all my Marvel models to create a, a sense of a, a dusty environment and helps to unify my entire collection. I like to mix and match my models between affiliations and rosters and I don't want to lock them into a particular basing style, so I do it all the same. It helps keep the models consistent even though everything has a unique color palette on it. When you're doing weathering powders, you want to make sure you're using a dry brush 
and applying a little bit at a time. With weathering powders, it's always easier to add more. It's very difficult to take away too much. So when in doubt, add a little bit, evaluate, and then erase. And you can see here that I over applied, especially on the wall. I'm going back in with a damp brush, but when you do that, it erases all of the powders. So gotta be careful. And once you're happy with it, you can seal. I'm using mineral spirits to help fix the powders to the base. It'll help protect it from handling. Once that evaporates in about an hour's time, I'll paint the base trim black, apply a matte varnish. I'm using Mr. Hoppy's Super Clear, and that will finish our Agent Venom. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you give it a like and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. If you want to check out my other social media platforms, I'll have links in the video description below. As always, until next time, happy hobbying.